Alrighty, so thank you all so much for watching the Team Builder. If you did not watch the Team Builder, a quick rundown is going to be my Iron Plate Defog Caesar, my Bandit Crawdont, of course we're going to have a sub called Mine Cresselia, a nice Rest Sleep Talk camera up, a mixed Dragonium Z with both Outrage and Draco Meteor and Dragon Quake uh, on Flygon, and of course our Color Change, especially defensive, Trick Room, Recover, Ice Punch, Stealth Rock, Kecleon with Safety Goggles, basically our switch into the Amoongus, and to a lesser extent, the Slowbro and maybe the Savali at all times, because if you don't know how Color Change works, when you get hit by a move, then you turn into the the type of that move, so then the next time they use it, it will be not very effective. So yeah, so we're going to go ahead and challenge, or get challenged rather, by Vivid here. We saw the team that he brought, I kind of expected him to either lead with Mamo or his, uh, maybe the Silvali, like just because of their good coverage options or Mamo's ability to set up rocks, so I led Caesar, knowing that I could always swap into my Kecleon if he, swap, if he leads with his Tornadus. Now I ended up going into my Kecleon here just to try to set up stuff rocks, figuring that he would have Heat Wave. He might have it at this point. But he does just taunt me as I try to set up my Stealth Rocks. Uh, Ice Punch is not a 2 Ikea because I don't have Protean, but with the Tornadus, I don't need any specific Pokemon to KO it. It just needs to be in range of a Bandit Aqua Jet, which is right at the after it comes in from Regenerator, it needs to be below 60%, basically. Here we gotta get to see Color Change work out here because he does bring in his Mammal Spawn. He goes for the knockoff. I do lose my Safety Goggles, but another knockoff will not KO me, so he'll have to go for another move because not only do I not have an item, but now I resist Dark Type moves while I'm a Dark Type myself. I finally get up my rocks as my Taunt wears off and expecting either another knockoff or maybe an Ice Shard. I go out to Caesar. Uh, this is a pretty bulky Caesar as well, so I know I could take any hit relatively well. And this is just all extra chip damage for his life orb. Now there's no way he's going to stay in here because a bullet punch can easily come his way. So I just click U-turn as he goes out into his Amoongus. From that damage, we definitely know that he's at least max HP. Uh, and Amoongus can have a lot of different techs for Caesar. So I just go directly out into my camera up, knowing that if he goes for Spore, I have the Sleep Talk. And if he stays in, I have just enough speed to outspeed his Amoongus. Uh, I literally crept it. For, oh, in case his Amoongus tries to speed creep my my, um, my camera up. So we get to stay in here and take out his Amoongus, which is really nice because I did lose my safety goggles early on, so now I don't have to worry about switching anything in this for, even though I don't really have to worry about it. Now here he does bring out his Sovali. I was afraid of him going for Defog, but I couldn't risk him having Surf. Surf would easily one-shot my Mega Camera up. So I go out into Kecleon. Risking the fact that he might just defog and unfortunately he calls it and he goes for defog. That was very risky on his part because I could have done a ton of damage to his Sovali right there. If you couldn't tell from the color, this is a Sovali Fairy type. And so my Kecleon unfortunately goes down before it's able to get its Stealth Rock back up. But that does mean my Caesar can come in here and very easily threaten this Sovali. Now, I do have Iron Plate equipped on Caesar, so that's going to be able to finish him off with my bullet punch there and this allows him another switch back into his tornadus it has too much hp and i could go for bullet punch here because it is probably a 2 hit ko but i needed to see if he had heat wave and he does have heat wave so that ends up being a good defensive switch on that turn and tornadus can't really touch my cresselia it needs a z move to do so and here I figured he would go for a taunt, so I just went straight for the attack because, again, I just need this Tornadus in range of my Crawdon. Crawdon's going to come in here at the end game and clean up is what this whole game plan was built around. So, I just need basically two more Psychic hits on him, and he will be in range after he comes back in from his Regenerator of my Crawdon. So, I get confused here, which is fine, but I do hit myself. Not very fine. Again, if I could just get damage off. So I'm going to stay in here because even if he does go for his Z move at this point, I know I can live it. And I was like, I just need a little bit more damage if I could just take the Z move and then take the move he goes for afterwards. If I can just get off two more Psychic-type attacks. Now we see he has Supersonic Sky, Tri Sky Strike here, so he definitely has 
the strongest Z-move that he can have, bar maybe like a Z knockoff for Black Hole Eclipse, that might do a little bit more damage. But that is why I went with such a bulky Cresselia, knowing that it might be in this position where it's taking a Z-move. Now, Cresselia ends up taking that hit, and I don't get confused that time, but unfortunately it's a roll at this point, whether or not I live this hurricane, and me hitting myself in confusion might have put that roll slightly more in his favor. So my Cresselia goes down without dealing that extra hit that I really, really needed. But he is within range of my Caesar's bullet punch, so I'm just going to go straight out and go for that. And he does go out to his Metagross, which I knew he might swap out to Metagross here, but the, the opportunity to take out the Tornadoes was just too great. I didn't want to sleep on that type of threat in any capacity. So he does bring out Metagross. We see Leftovers, which makes me think that it's more bulky. And so I was like, oh, okay, I just need a little bit more trip damage, and then it'll be in range of my Flygon's Earthquake. So after this U-turn, I thought for sure that it was in range. So I go directly out into my Flygon, and this is a mixed Flygon, so it's a, it's not a plus attack nature. It's that nice, naive, or hasty nature. And I go for Earthquake, and I was already planning my next move because I was like, there's no way he's going to live Earthquake, but he lives on one or two HP, he's able to put my flag on at critical HP with a Meteor Mash, and I can't stay in here because if he has a Bullet Punch tech on his on his um, Metagross, then he'll be able to easily kill me from this range. Uh, in addition to that, he was able to get up his Stealth Rock, so that just was a terrible exchange for me, because now I'm forced back out into my Caesar, which means my Caesar is going to take several extra hits, and while I do have Roost on it, not only does he have chance for crits, he has chances for attack boost with Meteor Mash. He even goes for the flinch with his in headbutt here, so just really, really unnecessary damage. I do go for Roost first here because I thought I could get back up to near full HP, but he critical hits me. So I'm basically back where I started when I came in <laughs> in the first place. Uh, his HP is starting to get a little bit high from the recovery from his own leftovers. So here he goes for Meteor Mash. Probably hoping for an attack boost, which he grabs. And I defog away his rocks, but because he got that attack boost, I am not going to be able to stay in here and, and roost up and all that good stuff. Because now I run the risk of him flinching me again and a lot of annoying things with the attack boost that he has. And we kind of saw how much damage he did with that initial crit. So being risk averse in this situation i just go straight for u-turn instead of going for roost again as he sets up his stealth rocks because i didn't want him to get out of range of u-turn as he recovered hp so i go out to my crawdot praying that maybe his tornadus is in range but remember that psychic that i didn't get off earlier because of the confusion hit that's basically how much damage i needed so i barely don't KO his Tornadus, and it's just, com it's it's really frustrating because then he goes out to his Slowbro, and I was like, oh, this is great, I just need shift damage on this too, and then I'll be fine for the end game. Uh, but I hit myself in confusion, so I don't get off any chip damage on the Slowbro, especially pre-Mega Evolution, because I would have at least probably gotten off two Aqua Jets there, or, or at least one. So... Confusion is not my friend in this battle. I do go out into my flag on here because a Dragonium Z Draco Meteor will do more to Slowbro than the Dragonium Z Outrage. And again, we're looking at that end game. Now my end game is just Caesar. I need things in range of Caesar. So I have to do as much damage to the Slowbro as I can. The Mano Swine will go down to Caesar. The Tornadus will be, should be in range of my Caesar. It's just going to be a matter of this Slowbro at this point. So, I'm really pleased with how much damage that uh, basically uninvested uh, Draco Meteor uh, Dragonium Z did. He is able to finish me off with a Skull, which is nice because that means, oh, he didn't recover his HP. Um, since I outsped his Amoongus earlier with my Mega Camera Up, I'm assuming I'll outspeed his Slowbro, and I, I was hoping he would think that he would outspeed me but I, I think I made a misplay there. I really should have fire blasted on that turn, and the, nat the nature power really would have um, been a good tech there because then I would have been forced to fire blast to earth power. But he's able to hit me with the hurricane, which takes a lot of my camera up's HP out. 
and that means I am not going to be able to live any hit from this Mammoth Swine. Uh, I like the Stomping Tantrum tech just because if I had brought my Tapu Bulu, Stomping Tantrum wouldn't have been affected by the Grassy Terrain. Not not able to take any hits there. But like I said, Caesar is my last remaining Pokemon. We're gonna go out to it, easily bullet punch and KO the Mammal Swine here. It's taken several life warp hits and that one singular ice punch earlier on from my Kecleon. And then he has his Slowbro, which he is so close to being in range of my U-turn. If I had just gotten off the Aqua Jet earlier, that would have been the damage I needed. But, unfortunately, very, very unfortunately, because, of course, we can't crit Slowbro, that's going to be the end of this battle, because I'm not going to be able to do enough damage with my Caesar. Uh, Life Orb would have helped out here, <laughs> grabbing me a little bit of extra damage. Uh, of course, if I had a Life Orb, then I probably would have gotten KO'd by the Metagross when he critical hit me. So, I definitely agree with what my opponent brought, and I think I played really well here just trying to set up my end game, but those few rolls against my favor there really decided things. With that being said, I haven't played Vivid since like the VPL a long, like two or three seasons ago, so I really enjoyed the rematch here. So be sure to check out his information in the description, and thank you all so much for watching. So that means we're going into this uh, game of two setup here with the GBA versus the MPA going O oh, and one, so we really have to win our next game to make up for this loss. So thank you all again for watching and look forward to the next battle against Jodor. Have a good day, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.